we need to talk about skin. Now Octane does not come with a dedicated skin material. However, it is not that hard to set up once you know how to do it. In this video, we'll go over my method to setting up skin. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the free head model from the link posted in the description. First step we're going to do is clear out a scene by removing the cube. And we're going to remove the lights too. We will leave the camera as we'll use it later. And let's import in the free head model from 1024. We're going to use the OBJs. Uh, let me find a directory where it's located. Head scans, 1024. And I'm going to use OBJs. So I'm going to import all these objects here because we need to use all of them. And you can tell there's different types of brows, different types of eyelashes, and then we have the head. To simplify this scene, I'm going to combine all the hairs together. The hair is all going to use one material anyway, so I'm just going to combine it together just to make my life easier. And it looks correct in size, and we have the head. So again, we are going to take all the hairs and just join it. Control J. So now it's just eyelashes here, and I'm going to call it hair. And you can tell there's like smoothing issues right now, and we'll fix that by going to object. Shade smoothie. Do the same for the hair. Okay, now let's bring in the jacket. I'm going to go into import, OBJ again. I'm going to go up a directory and go to the jacket. And we're going to click this one OBJ. Same issue. We have a smoothing issue. So I'm just going to shade smooth it out. Okay. So let's start setting up the materials for this. Let's go to make sure we're using Octane. Let's make sure we start our Octane server. That needs to be started too. Just want to do a quick check on the settings right now. 500 is okay. Path tracer. Okay, that looks okay. I'm going to slide this over. And I'm going to go to shader editor here. We don't need this. And we're going to delete this. For the head, we're going to delete that. And for the hair, just not assign anything. We're going to create a new material. Make sure we rename all this stuff. Hair. Head. Jacket. Alright, for the hair, we're going to start with that. So we're going to go in that order. We're going to assign hair to red head to green and jacket to blue so RGB so let's make this red go here I'm just gonna copy this universal material paste it here Ooh, didn't copy I'm gonna sign this green And for this, we're going to make it blue. And let's see. All right. Well, the background, let's change that. I'm going to use an HDR texture. I'm going to set this to an RGB image. And we're going to go to my HDR directory here. And I'm just going to grab this image right here. Okay, so color space is off. We need to set this to 1. And it looks fine, but if your viewport does not look fine, such as it might look too dark, then scroll down. Make sure that your color management here. Make sure this is set, the display device is set to sRGB. Your view transform is set to raw. Okay, that's important. 
So I'm just going to do the hair first, which is the easiest. So this is a dark brown hair. So I'm just going to pick a brown color. We'll start from there. And then we're just going to bring it down. And let's see how far do we want to bring it down. I'm going to use HSV for this one. And let's make the saturation 0.9. And we'll put the value here at 2. And I'm going to go to the jacket now. And I'm going to import the images that I need for the jacket. So the jacket is going to be using a combination of RGB image nodes and also grayscale image nodes. So we're going to bring those two in. Octane textures. Go to images. RGB. And we're going to grab a grayscale also. Grayscale. Okay, so it's important to remember the reason why we have a grayscale image is because it'll save us on memory. And the RGB has three channels while grayscale only has one. We're going to load up a the image. And let's see for the jacket here. So let's go to meshes again. Head scan. We're going to use the JPEG image here. Texture. And go to jacket. There's color, gloss, normal, and spec. So the only color texture is really the jacket and normal. Those should be using RGB image nodes. Okay, so we'll plug that in. And we got that. And I'm going to duplicate this. For the normal and I am going to actually we can just plug it directly in grab the normal here now it's also important to know that this is an image node it has a gamma value of one because it's a data texture not a color texture like the that like the albedo texture so we have that set correctly now and let's do the grayscale image. So the first one we're going to load up. Let's see here. Let's go with gloss and specs, but we're going to do gloss first. Gloss is basically roughness inverted. So you plug this into the roughness. And what we're going to do is also invert it. Because this is a data texture, not a color texture, we need to set this to 1. I'm going to duplicate this, take off the inversion, and I am going to grab the spec now and plug that in specular. Also, this is also a data texture, so it should be one. Of course, we're not inverting it. Specular just goes straight into specular. And that looks pretty good. One thing I want to use is the new BSDF model, a newer BSDF model, I should say, which is GGX. And that will allow the colors to not darken when you increase the roughness too much. And that's it for the jacket. Let's copy the whole thing. And do the same thing for the head right now. Now I'm just going to set up the texture without setting up the um, subsurface scattering yet. I'll do that later. Let's just get the texture in place. All right, let's load in the color for the head. We'll back up one directory. There's the head right there. Here's the color, glossiness. We're not going to use micro normals. That's if you get really close to it, you'll see the finer wrinkles. We're just going to skip that one for simplicity's sake. And we're going to use the gloss, the normal, and the spec. The same thing as what we used before. Now we can use translucency to kind of isolate the ears, but we're just going to skip that for now. And let's see. Let's go with color. Stick that into the beetle. Now, the reason why I copied it over is because I don't want to change any of these settings. These settings are all kind of set correctly already. I just need to change the textures. So it's just easier to just copy it over rather than reset it up. Okay, this one was specular. Uh, what do we 
we'll use the specular map here. This is a color specular map, but once you feed it into a grayscale, it'll just use the luminance value. And we'll feed into that. And let's use the glossiness here. This is inverted, and we'll go to the roughness here. And of course, the also important normal map. That's going to make it really look good. Okay, and let's take a look. All right, the head's looking pretty good, I think. And the detail and the texture looks pretty good. We're not really getting any type of subsurface scattering, of course, because we haven't applied it yet. So you can really see it around the ears, even around the, the lips here, even in underneath the nose. And the texture, while the texture and the quality looks realistic because of the detail, the skin doesn't quite look alive to me. And we can correct that by applying subsurface scattering using random walk. So let's start doing that now. So first thing we're going to do is go to medium right here. We're going to click that plus button and we're going to select random walk. I'm going to drag it up here because we need to use the albedo texture to make this work. So we're going to disconnect this and connect it to the albedo. Now it's green because we have it has transmission set. In this case, albedo modulates the, the subsurface a bit. So if you have it completely white, let me see if I can get this correct. Um, well, I, it'll work better if I turn on the transmission here. Let me go to a grayscale value here. So I'm going to set the transmission to a value of 1. So it's a 100% transmission. As you can see, with the white color, there's no real subsurface scattering going on. It's just like a hard, white, chalky surface. So albedo, when the color is completely white at 1, it negates the transmission. So what we're going to want to do is make this completely black. And now we're getting some type of uh, subsurface scattering going on. So remember, turn off albedo, make it black if you want subsurface to work correctly. Now, this type of subsurface scattering should not be specular. That's probably something you would use for like a foggy type of glass. And we don't have that. We have human skin here. So we need to set it to diffuse. So now it's taking on more of a waxy appearance rather than foggy glass. So that's a good start. So now that we got this part done, we can ignore that and just move over to the random walk. So what we're going to do now is change the bias to reflect more light back to the camera versus traveling through the surface of the, uh, the material. Otherwise your, your skin's just going to look too dark and we don't want that. That's probably good for like a, a thick candle but uh, we want it to be more like skin. So we're just going to reflect it. We're going to set the bias all the way up to one. So since we got the albedo right now, we want what kind of color do we want exiting out when it travels through? And right now it's set to white. We don't want that. We want that to be a bit on the uh, redder side. But not too much. do that and it's still it's looking better but it's still a little bit waxy so we're gonna increase the density we're gonna make it a little bit thicker so that less light travels through it ah, two looks pretty good 200 looks pretty good Let's try 500 500 is way too dark Yeah. 
So maybe 200. No, it's too much. I think we're going to use 300. That looks pretty good. I'm going to adjust this around. Just play around with this. Ooh, that's too much. I think 0.7 worked pretty well. Point seven. Okay, those are the values I'm using. So this is a pretty simple setup. So just keep that in mind when you're setting it up. You can just do this. Don't fiddle around too much with the albedo. It should be black so that you can use the full subsurface scattering. Unless you want to isolate it and define what is subsurface and what is not. So let's say you have dirt on the face. You could probably use the albedo to kind of modulate that. Or you can even use the uh, transmission. Actually, the transmission is probably the, the proper way to do it. Use transmission, and then you can feed the color of the dirt, like a like a mud or something like that, through the albedo to cover that up. All right, and that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment.